but are tanks all that invincible? No smoke. But exactly how big of a deal are tanks? What aspects of tank design and operations challenge the myth of invincibility that surrounds this beast of battle? Tanks seldom operate alone, as they are organized into armored units which involve the support of the infantry. Thus, tanks are not solo players. Because at the end of the day, tanks might plow through an enemy's position, but they cannot occupy territory and hold an objective. Only men can. Though powerful, tanks need protection too. Usually through the support of reconnaissance or ground attack aircraft. और ये है फजाई हथियारों का जमीनी अफवाज की इमदाद का अंसुर फजाइया के तैयारे जरूरत पड़ने के चंद मिनटों में ही महाज के ऊपर परवास करते हुए दुश्मन को एक दूसरी समत से मसरूफ अमल करते हैं so if the enemy is expecting an armored column to arrive and the column itself does not know of enemy presence beyond visual range it will probably be ambushed because of its high profile thus the cavalry too needs the cavalry The prevalence of unconventional and asymmetric warfare has put into question the utility of armored force. Considering that a tank is difficult to maneuver, especially in urban combat where civilians are in proximity, it can be easily targeted by insurgents or terrorists with improvised explosive devices or rocket-propelled grenades. Though tanks can be decisive in city fighting with the ability to demolish walls, they are especially vulnerable in urban combat. Bullet. Tanks need a sustained supply chain for extensive operations. The North African campaign of World War II, headed by legendary generals like Irvin Rommel and Bernard Montgomery, proved another important battleground for tanks, as the flat, desolate terrain was ideal for conducting mobile armored warfare. However, this battlefield also showed the importance of logistics, especially in an armored force, as the principal warring armies, the German Africa Corps and the British Eighth Army, often outpaced their supply trains in repeated attacks on each other, resulting in a complete stalemate. In the end, it was Germany, the side that failed its tanks logistically, that lost in the pivotal battle of Alamein. Tanks are vulnerable if targeted from the air. No, they are very vulnerable when targeted from the air. Helicopter gunships with ATGWs or anti-tank guided weapons are probably the most successful tank busting machines ever created. There are several reasons for this weakness. One is that tanks are easily detectable. The metal they are made up of shows well on radar and especially obvious if they are moving in formation. A mobile tank also produces a lot of heat, noise and dust, all of which are clues 
for the enemy which is watching from the skies. Here's a fact. Attack is not built like a tank. The deposition of armor around it is not uniform. The front is typically better armored than the sides or rear. Moreover, the tracks, wheels and suspension are some of the most vulnerable spots, exposed and outside the armored hull. The easiest way to disable a tank is to target the tracks for what is called a mobility kill. Once a tank is disabled, it is immobile. And once it is immobile, it is past tense. Next week, you will meet the Sea Soldiers. You will gain unparalleled access to the Naval Special Service Group, the SSG Navy, and its new watchmen of the ocean, the Marines. Get ready to float over land and swim underwater. Thanks for watching. We are soldiers.